Hello everyone. We are going to take today the solutions of NEET Chemistry Paper 2024, which has which has been conducted on 5th of May Sunday. I will discuss the questions. I will discuss the answers and solutions. Please match your answers with the given ones. Let us begin with our first question. This is a match the list question and it is based on the electrochemistry Faraday's law. In the first option, you can see the conversion has been given for H2O converted into O2. If you see the charge change, oxygen minus 2 is becoming 0. So there is a change of N that is 2. Hence, we can say the answer over here should be 2 Faraday. Similarly, if you take the second one, it is going to be MnO4 minus converted to Mn plus 2. Manganese is in plus 7 oxidation state. So there is a charge change of 5 units which matches to 5 Faraday. Similarly, in option C, calcium converts into calcium chloride. The charge oxidation state is changing from 0 to plus 2. So, N should be equal to 2. But here there is a hitch. They have given us 1.5 mole. So, this amounts to totally 3. That is why the charge will be 3 Faraday. So, if you check up the answers by now, you can see A matches with 2, B matches with 4, and C matches with 1. That answer is found to be 3. So, A2, B4, C1, and obviously the remaining D will come out to be 2. Let us go to the next question. Which of the following is not a redox reaction? They have asked a very, very simple question in redox reaction this time. And if you carefully observe reaction number 2, you can see in beryllium cl barium chloride, sodium sulfate reaction, which is by the way, a precipitation reaction. Each and every element's oxidation state remains the same. Barium remains plus 2, sodium will remain plus 1 and so on. So since there is no oxidation number change, the answer has to be 2. This reaction is not a redox reaction. Let us jump to the next question. They are asking about intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Now a very simple condition exists that the two functional groups in aromatic ring have to be on the ortho position so that they can create intramolecular hydrogen bonding, which we can clearly see over here between these two groups. So the answer of this question will be 3. This is a direct pickup question, which you can be seen in the chapter of aldehydes ketone, as well as you can see this in the practical chemistry. Failing solution, there are two solutions we use, failing A and failing B. So the solution of pure aqueous copper sulfate is known as failing A solution. Quite a straightforward question. In the next question you have is one gram of sodium hydroxide treated with 25 ml of 0.75 molar HCl solution. Find the mass of NaOH left unreacted. Now you have been given over here NaOH, which is 1 gram, which you can call it as 1000 milligram. Then they are giving you HCl. So this is 25 ml, 0 0.75 molar. So I'm just giving you a hint and you can go ahead with it. You can convert this into mass. Simply subtract these two masses and you will get the final answer. 
His answer comes out to be around 250 milligram. So the answer option is 4. This is one of the most easiest question you can get in chemical bonding chapter. You have been given ammonia which matches with trigonal pyramidal or rather just a pyramidal also. So this option A will match with number Roman number 1. Then bromine pentafluoride. This will match with square pyramidal. Xenon tetrafluoride matches with square planar structure. So if you see the matching so far, the answer is 3, 1, 4, 2. And the last sulfur hexafluoride, as you know, is a famous octahedral structure. So the answer is 3. Now, this question is, I think, a very easy one if you know NCRT well. Or it can become a nasty question if you have not read NCRT correctly. In the current NCRT, in the chapter of D block elements, you will find there is an example given where this is a question given itself. And the answer very clearly is there is a large third ionization energy or ionization enthalpy which is required for T5 to D4 electron change. So this is clear sentence given in the book. So the answer over here is 3. If your concept is not very clear over here, you might write other answer and which is quite similar answer over here D4 to D5 by the way, which is a very wrong answer. Next comes a very, very simple thermodynamics question. Isothermal, isochoric, isobaric and adiabatic. I hope I don't have to discuss the answer with you also. The answer option is 2. Where isothermal is carried at constant temperature. Isochoric is at constant volume. Isobaric is at constant pressure and adiabatic, no heat exchange. I think a very simple question. Those who know very basic thermodynamics also can solve this. Chemical kinetics question. Activation energy of any chemical reaction can be calculated. Now over here, in case you do not know the theory directly, Still, you can recollect the Arrhenius related equation, which is log K2 upon K1 equal to Ea upon 2.303 R 1 upon T1 minus 1 upon T2. I can calculate activation energy if I know the rate constants at two different temperatures. Other options like orientation, collision, uh, one single standard temperature, they won't help you to calculate the activation energy. So the answer over here is 2. They have given a compound C6H14 and out of all these isomers, they want such a structure where two tertiary carbon atoms are present. So, when you see there are four carbon atoms in straight chain, there is one methyl group here and there is another methyl group here. You can see this is a tertiary carbon, this is a tertiary carbon. So, the option is number one. Two, three, dimethyl butane is an isomer of C6H14, which contains two tertiary carbon atoms. Next, we need to just work out about the configurations such that you can get where you have same spin-only magnetic moment. For example, if you see, I will just first mention the ions and then we'll quickly solve the things. They had given this from the table of uh, from your textbook about magnetic moment. 
So if you see titanium plus three, it is 3D1. Chromium plus two is found to be 3D4. Mn plus two is 3D5. Fe plus two is 3D6. And scandium plus three is 3D0. So those who have the similar number of unpaired electrons will show the same magnetic moment. So number of electrons are 1, 4, 5, 4 and 0. So you can see chromium plus 2 which is B and Fe plus 2 which is D. They will show you the same magnetic moment. Arrange the following elements in the increasing order of electronegativity. Here, the options given were a little bit confusing if your concept is not clear. So, when you see in the periodic table chapter of 11 standard, you can actually clearly see that they have given clear values of these elements. So, from uh, the given values, you can make your own order. For example, silicon is electronegativity 1.8, followed by carbon, which is 2.5. Now comes a little confusion in option 3 and 4, because after this comes nitrogen, which is 3, then comes oxygen 3.5, and then comes fluorine 4. So those who have made a little confusion over here, might go little wrong in this question. So the correct answer should be silicon carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine, which is option number three, you can see. You should always know oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. One of the easiest question, I think, from alcohol chapter or from practical chemistry. The one which instantaneously react with Lucas reagent has to be a tertiary alcohol. And they have clearly given option number two as the tertiary alcohol. There are two complexes mentioned here. Both have the number of ligands as six. The coordination number is six. That means both are going to be octahedral. So, the first statement comes out to be true. If you see the second one, ammonia and fluoride, you can understand from their configuration, ligand field strength, that fluoride is a weak field ligand, ammonia is a strong field. So strong field ligands go for diamagnetism, weak field can keep the electrons unpaired. So the second statement also is found to be true. So the answer is 3, both 1 and 2 are 2. By the way, both the complexes have been worked in detail in your NCERT. So you can clearly see the orbital diagram and everything given there. Statement 1, boiling point of hydrides. Now this is a clear order given in NCERT. It's a true statement. Since water has the least molecular weight, it's expected to have lowest boiling point, which is also a true part. And as we know, hydrogen bonding is present in water. So this is also a true statement. So overall, both the statements are true. Answer is three. Both statement one and two are true. A quantum number based question, a very, very easy one. I don't think I should even discuss this question. The answer is one. You have ML, spin quantum number MS, azimuthal and principal. So we know the values over here. So A, that is three. So this first one matches with the orientation of the orbital. That's the job of magnetic quantum number. This is about the spin. This is about the size and this is about the shape of the orbital. Very, very clear, straightforward question was asked about quantum numbers this time. Then comes um, aldehyde ketone acids based question. 
And if you solve one or two of them, you will get the answer very easily. The first one you have two cyclohexene rings connected with a double bond, and they are converting it into cyclohexanone. A very simple trick, if you perhaps know that when you break the bond in the center by ozonolysis, you can create this compound. So immediately, A matches with option number four. Second one, you have a benzene ring, which is converted into benzophenone. Now to do that, we need another compound which contains an aromatic ring with C double bond O. And you can clearly see that is given in option number one. So by now, if you have seen option one and option three match so far. Now you just find out one more answer and you can see the answer will be coming out to be one. So C2, so in this was A, this was B. So in C, you can see that it is a benzene ring connected to an, e. oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I've written by Mr. Phenol. They have given cyclohexanol. I'll just change this. Yeah. So this has been given cyclohexanol which is converted into cyclohexanone. For this, you just need a reagent, which is an oxidizing agent. They have given us CrO3 over here. So C comes out to be 2. So the option correct answer over here will be 1. This is again a multi-step synthesis given to you. We are starting with an alkene group and finally ending it with an aldehyde. Since you are not creating any branch over here, it's a straight chain carbon atom. The simple thing comes out to be, you have to start with diborane. Diborane is found in option one and four. Now the moment diborane comes, H2O2 hydroxide, this is inevitable with it. It has to come. Now, the most important one is, this is going to give you corresponding alcohol, which will be converted into an aldehyde. So, alcohol to aldehyde conversion is only possible by pyridinium chlorochromate. That is why answer over here is 4. Another NCRT pickup question is from biomolecules. Which of the following compounds do not react with glucose? And it's been clearly mentioned over here in the book that Schiff's reagent and sodium hydrogen sulfide do not react with glucose, although it seems to contain aldehyde group. So the answer over here is one, that is B and E options. You cannot expect any easier question in chemical bonding other than this. They have simply asked the number of sigma and pi bond in the compounds. So the compound first given is ethane, which contains one sigma bond. Ethene, which contain one sigma and two pi bond. So if you see so far, A matches with three, B matches with i think four now number c is a very tricky one for carbon molecule you need to check up molecular orbital theory let us see if you have forgotten that still you can answer the rest of it and ethyne contains one sigma and two pi bonds that answer is one so you can understand the option answer is one over here a3 D4, C2, and D1. Another fact-based question from NCRT. Group 16 elements, that is oxygen family. Oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, and polonium, which do not show minus 2 oxidation state. The answer is 
polonium. Now, in case you have forgotten this question also, you can understand polonium being metallic cannot show any negative oxidation state. That is another reason why polonium doesn't show any oxidation state of minus 2. Now, this can be solved in multiple ways. The way I solved it is quite like a shortcut. You can see a trick. They have given the Kc value approximately in the range of 10 raised to minus 3. Now, in NCRT, they have given a diagram at a fact thing that if the answer of Kc is this or less than 10 raised to minus 3, the reaction has a tendency to go backward in direction. This is the one of the easiest trick by which you can solve the question in no time at all. This question also can be solved in multiple ways. Like for example, you have an equation k is equal to a e raised to minus e a upon r t. If you take log of this, which is log k equal to log a minus log that is e a upon r t. They have kept this as your y axis. 1 upon t as the x-axis, this is m and this is c. So, when we draw the graph of ln k, which is on y-axis, and 1 upon t on the x-axis, we should get a line with a negative slope. Now, the moment you see a negative slope, straight away, option a, option c, and option d are all cancelled because they all have positive slope. This is the line only with a negative slope. The answer is 2. Another easy equilibrium question. You have to find where Kp and Kc are not equal to each other. That means you are searching for a condition where delta n is not equal to 0. So, if you calculate and see, delta n over here is not equal to 0, answer is 3. This is also kind of an NCRT pickup question from hydrocarbons chapter. You have three isomeric pentanes given and their boiling point orders are n pentane greater than iso and greater than neo. Obviously, this is a true statement. And the fact lies that as branching increases, all these related to the forces of attraction reason they have given, that's why boiling point decreases. Both the statements are true. So, the answer is three. Based on SN1 mechanism, they had asked a question. And as you know, SN1 reaction happens for tertiary greater than secondary, greater than primary. So when you see the particular compound over here, the only one which you can find reacting will be number two option. This is based on your Bohr's concept. And we can solve and check this answer. You know, you have energy is proportional to Z square upon N square. So, they have compared helium along with beryllium ion. So, that will amount to Z of helium square upon N of helium squared multiplied by in the denominator Z of beryllium squared N of beryllium squared. So, if I substitute, we have to find energy of beryllium given. This value is given as minus x. So, if I substitute all the requisite numbers, atomic number of helium 2, while atomic number of beryllium is 4. Now, they have given ground state for helium, that is 1 square. And they are asking for beryllium 
n equal to 2, that is 2 square. So if you simply solve this, this is 4 into 4 upon 16, that comes out to be 1. So energy of beryllium will also be equal to minus x. The process in which entropy is getting increased. So you can check up each and every one. Liquid to vapor. Yes, entropy increases. Temperature of a solid goes from 130 Kelvin to 0 Kelvin. No, obviously, entropy is going to decrease over here. 2 mole of solid converted into gas. Solid to gas. Definitely entropy increases. One mole particles of gas converted into two mole particles. Yes, entropy is going to increase. So the answer will be A, C and D. This is a question which a nine standard student also can solve if he uses common sense. Solid is converted into vapor state. And the process is known as sublimation. Another question which if you are confident enough of very few things also you can manage. For example, they are asking us different isomerism. The moment you see any compound with a complex with water, it's obviously the solvent isomerism. The moment you see the cation as well as an ion both has coordinate complex, it is called a coordination isomerism. The group NO2 re should remind you of linkage isomerism. The leftover is only Roman 3. So the answer should be over here. 2, 3, 4, 1. 2, 3, 4, 1 which is found in number 3. A very straightforward amines chapter, aromatic amines basically. Aniline cannot show Friedel-Crafts reaction. That's very true because aniline has a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom over here. And due to this lone pair, the moment aluminium chloride comes for the reaction, there is a bonding taking place between them due to which further reaction of friedel crafts is cancelled. So this is a true statement, of course. Aniline cannot be prepared using Gabriel thalamide synthesis, a true statement. Gabriel thalamide cannot be used to prepare aromatic amines. So aniline cannot be used. I'm sorry, cannot be prepared. So that is why both the statements are true. Statement 1 and 2 are true. Just a mere funny observation. All the questions given in today's paper, everywhere statement 1 and 2 are coming out to be true. Next one, another NCRT, very straightforward question, but with a little bit of trick in case you are aware of the basic things. Over here, they are asking about first ionization enthalpy. Now, these are straightforward from a given period. Elements are given, that is second period. Lithium is 2s1, beryllium is 2s2, 2s2, 2p1, 2s2, 2p2, and 2s2, 2p3. Wherever there is a completely filled orbital or a half filled orbital, the ionization energy shoots up. So, lithium will be lowest one, then will come boron, beryllium, carbon. Now, luckily they have not given oxygen. Otherwise, oxygen would have come here, nitrogen later. But let it be, it's not given. So, this is going to be our order. That is uh, number 4 option. This problem again can be solved by multiple ways, but a very simple one to just calculate number of moles in each case. They are asking highest number so we are looking for the highest, largest number of moles. So option one 
contain 4 gram, which is 4 upon 4, that's 1 mole, 2.7 liter, that is 2.27 upon 22.7, which is 0.1. Then you can see 4 mole. I don't think we need to search anything further. 4 mole, nothing given is higher than that. So this is also the answer. Highest number of atoms. Next question is about stability of carbocation. Obviously, we search about stability. Tertiary is greater than primary, greater secondary than primary, which is the least one as methyl carbocation. So when you search over here, a very, very simple answer you can see is number two. They are asking about the solubility of a gas and to find that, they have given us Henry's law constant. A very simple relation exists. Solubility of a gas is inversely proportional to KH. So you can clearly see that 145A has the highest KH value. It will be lowest, least soluble, followed by the gas with 35 kilobar, which is C, and followed by 2 into 10 raised to minus 5, that is B. So the answer should be 4. Then comes an empirical formula problem, which let us solve and see. There are three elements given with percentages 30 to 20. Remaining percent is C, which comes out to be, I think, 48. When you divide by their atomic masses, 34 by 64 is 0 0.5. 20 upon 40 is also 0 0.5. And 48 upon 32, which comes out to be 1.5. So when you divide by the smallest digit, the answer is 113. So it is A, B, and C3. The answer is 4. A reaction method of preparation of chlorides, you can see given from alcohols. So whenever you are treating alcohol with PCl3, you get a chloride with a byproduct H3PO3. But when we are treating it with PCl5, you get RCl, POCl3 and of course HCl. So they are asking us one byproduct here and another byproduct here. So the answer should be two H3PO3 and POCl3. A little different type of question on solutions chapter was asked this time. There is a relation between osmotic pressure versus concentration. So our basic relation is going to be pi equal to CRT. They are saying that they have plotted a graph of pi on the y-axis, C on the x-axis. So this is my y, this is x. Obviously, this multiplication is slope. I should get a line this way. They are saying slope is found to be this much. So, slope value, which is by the way equal to R into T, is 25.73. Temperature will be therefore 25.73 up upon 0 0.083. This comes out to be 310 Kelvin, which is 37 degrees Celsius. The answer is 3. They have given a reaction wherein you have carbon hydrogen double bonded with a carbon hydrogen followed by once again a cyclohexene. 
Now, when you are treating it with KMnO4 with acidic medium, the bond will break, and we should get a compound wherein the alicyclic ring remains as it is, and this carbon gets converted into carboxylic acid. So the option over here should be three. By the way, in the questions in the images, you will find some markings have been made. So I've just taken a paper from internet where some students have done this marking. These may not be the answers, right? So wherever I'm giving the marking of red color, please understand that's the answer. Next coordination of very simple question has been asked. Homoleptic complexes where only one type of ligand is present. Heteroleptic complexes where more than one type are present. Right? So our statement number one, they are saying this is a homoleptic complex true. This is a, a heteroleptic complex is also true. Complex this has, uh, they have stated, has only one kind of ligand, but this has more than one kind. This is also a true statement. So the answer over here is statement one and true, two, both are true statements. This is from practical chemistry. They have given this question where more salt preparation, when you do ferrous ammonium sulfate, the ferrous sulfate, that is Fe plus two salt, might undergo hydrolysis. So to prevent that, they add dilute sulfuric acid, about half a test tube, something, that prevents hydrolysis of ferrous ions. This is another NCRT-based question. Dipole moment of NF3 and NH3. This has been explained with a diagram that in NF3, there is a lone pair over here. Even in NH3, there is a lone pair over here. But the problem is dipole moments of nitrogen fluorine bonds go in these directions where the lone pair moment go in the opposite direction. On the other hand, in case of ammonia, all the dipoles go in one single direction. They reinforce each other, giving a higher dipole moment in general. So this statement is a false statement. Carbonate anion, which is CO3 minus 2. And this shows actually three different resonating canonical forms. This is a true statement. This is our answer. If you check the other ones, ozone has only two resonating structures, not three. Boron trifluoride being a very symmetrical molecule, it has zero dipole moment. So this is also a false statement. Next is a very, very basic question given on just identification of the groups. Qualitative analysis, practical chemistry has been first time introduced this year. So the ions which are given are copper is from group 2, aluminium is from group 3, cobalt is from group 4, barium is from group 5 and magnesium is from group 6. So this is B, this is A, D, C and E. So the correct answer over here is number three. Next question you have is about organic synthesis. Let us work out and check. They have given CH3, CH2, CH2I. First step treated with sodium cyanide. This will convert the iodide group into a cyanide. Next, they are saying reaction with OH, but in a partial hydrolysis way. Whenever we do partial hydrolysis, 
cyanide converts into a primary amide group. If a complete hydrolysis was there, cyanide would have become carboxylic acid that they do not want. Next, this is treated with NaOH and bromine. And if you have studied this very well, this is Hoffman's bromamide synthesis. In that process, one carbon atom disappears, which is by the way CO group, and you are left with propyl amine as the final product. So the answer over here is number three. Next, you have a reaction based on activation energy. A quite similar theory was asked also earlier. Let us solve and check this answer. This is log K2 upon K1 equal to activation energy upon 2.303 R T2 minus T1 upon T1 T2. Now, in the first question, first statement, they are saying, Rate of the reaction quadruples. That means makes it four times. Activation energy is to be found out. Now 2.303 multiplied by 8.314. The answer you can remember as shortcut 19.1, which you can take for simplicity as even 20. Now temperature wise you see is 27 degree which is uh, 300 Kelvin, 57 degree, that is 330 Kelvin. So this is going to be 330 minus 300 upon 300 into 330. So when you solve all these things, you finally get an answer of 39 kilojoule. So the nearmost answer for us is 38.04 kilojoule. I have done a lot of approximations like this. That is why my answer has come out to be this way. Otherwise, if you do actually everything with log table, the answer will be this way. But as we know, log tables are not there in neat exam. I think one of the most trickiest question in the whole paper would be this one. They have given us a reaction of 2NO producing N2 plus O2. They have given initially the concentrations of all the substances. So when you calculate the Kc value for them, which is nitrogen concentration into oxygen concentration upon NO squared. So when you substitute, you can see just an observation. All the numbers given are 10 raised to minus 3 numbers. So, nitrogen is going to be 3 into 10 raised to minus 3, 4.2 into 10 raised to minus 3, and 2.8 into 10 raised to minus 3 squared. So, I have cancelled all the 10 raised to minus 3. This answer comes out to be 1.607. This is my first step of calculation. Now, when I come to the actual now about degree of dissociation to be calculated. So let us see, this is considered as 2C and initially these are 0. So at equilibrium, you can see from this 2C, 2C alpha is deducted, C alpha are deducted. So I get Kc equal to alpha C into alpha C divided by 2C taken common, 1 minus alpha, the whole square. This will be alpha square upon C square, 4C square, 1 minus alpha square. Kc, we have calculated above as 1.60. This will come out to be alpha square upon 4 into 1 minus alpha, the whole square. If you take a square root and solve further, then the answer comes out to be 0.717. That is option 2. 
since this question was asked in the section B, you had a very good reason to leave it in option and go ahead for a better, easier question than this. And I can show you that easier question immediately next one. The work done during reversible isothermal expansion of gas and the data is given. If you are a very good observer, instead of solving, you can clearly mark the answer as 4. Because expansion work is always negative and very luckily there is one single answer which is negative. By the way, if you want to really solve the question, it is minus 2.303 nRT log P1 upon P2. So 2.303, number of mole they have given is 1 mole. All the answers are in calorie and they have given R also as calorie. 298 Kelvin log 20 atmosphere to 10 atmosphere. Go on happily solving it and you will get the answer in this way. Next is based on Faraday's laws. And it's actually a very, very simple question you can see. That you have W is equal to atomic weight multiplied by I into T upon valency into 96,500. Atomic weight given is 63.5 for copper. Current given 9.648. 100 seconds. Copper's valency is 2. And this is usually 96,500. But they have given a very convenient value so that you can do an easy calculation. And this is the answer which you get. The nearmost answer is 0 0.315. Let us see this organic conversion. They have given cyclohexane connected with two functional groups. And the first one is PBR3. PBR3's function is to convert OH group into bromide. So we got our first uh, answer over here as bromide. Now they are treating this with alcoholic KOH, which is obviously going to show us elimination reaction. So this bromide, which is alpha carbon, and using Sedzev rule, I will place a double bond here. So the answer comes out to be number three. So first a substitution reaction, second an elimination reaction. We come to the last question of today's paper. They want diamagnetic lanthanide ions. So the moment you are seeing diamagnetic lanthanides, you must see for either 4F0 or 4F14, which is found to be cerium plus 4, which is 4F0. And whiter BM plus 2, which is 4F14. If you calculate the other ones, obviously you are going to get uh, some other number other than 0 and 14. That's why the answer given here is 3. I hope you will be thorough with the answers, sol solutions I have discussed. I wish you all the best for your result of NEET 2024. Thank you so much.